This is Nabil Asif from Click Australia. In this video, I'll be demonstrating some exciting capabilities that I've been able to bring to Click using our integration with Python. Click's advanced analytics integration allows you to extend our built in expression library. This means you can begin to use predictive analytics and advanced machine learning algorithms as part of your Click apps. I'll go through three examples here forecasting, clustering, and supervised machine learning. The apps I will show you make use of a server-side extension that I have built in Python, which is an open project available on ClickBranch and GitHub. So let's begin with our first example. Here I have time series data on emergency department attendances for hospitals in Victoria. Right now we're looking at the actual figures for the entire state. Now I want to add a forecast for this time series. To do this, I'll go into edit mode and add a new measure to this chart. I start by typing the name of my server-side extension, in this, scale, in this case, PyTools. Uh, this gives me a list of several capabilities available to me that make use of algorithms from libraries in Python. All these are reusable functions that I've built using well-known open libraries. For forecasting, we're going to use a function called profit. Uh, this makes use of the profit library made available openly by the data science team at Facebook. This modern library rarely simplifies the effort needed to get a good forecast. And so all we need to provide in the is the date dimension, in this case, month start, the measure we want to forecast, and finally, any additional arguments. In this case, we let Profit know that this data has a monthly frequency. And so we have our forecast. This is a decent best fit line, but how would you improve upon this forecast? Well, we can do that simply by adjusting the parameters passed to our function. So for example, we can try taking a log of the values here as is often done in forecasting. And we can see that our forecast has improved. Now we'll go to my next sheet where I have added expressions for the upper and lower limit to the forecast as well. And now with these three expressions, you can begin to use the power of click. Because this app can now give us forecast for any of the hospitals in this data set. And you can see that we are getting good results for very different trends. And these capabilities can be used across different data sets. Now we're looking at a different app built on road crash statistics from Victoria. Again, we have applied functions from Profit, and we can see that we are getting good results because our algorithm has been able to break up the time series into the trend and seasonality components. We can see that the trend is quite flat, but has had a slight downswing from 2016 onwards. We can also see the, that Friday uh, seems to be the worst day of the week in terms of the number of accidents. We can go even further and look at the effect of holidays on the time series. Now, quite often, you can apply several data science techniques on a single data set to get useful insights. In this case, the data is quite suitable for unsupervised machine learning, specifically clustering. Clustering helps us detect patterns based on the similarity of different dimensions and measures in the data. Here we can look at accident locations and try to find clusters of accidents. So first, let's use Click to ask a few questions and drill into what we are really interested in. For me, I want to look at Melbourne, shown here in the darkest color, as it has the highest number of accidents. We've now drilled down to individual accidents. Let's narrow this down to more recent data. Now, when I hit the scan button, I'll send a request to a clustering algorithm in Python to find patterns in this data set. And there we go. Our algorithm found 219 clusters within the scope of our selections in Click, coloring each cluster according to its label. Now, at this point, the data is still a bit overwhelming. So I'll go a bit deeper let's say by focusing on bicycle accidents. You may notice a lot of yellow points on our map. These are outliers, which aren't assigned to any cluster and get the label minus one. 
using the standard scatter plot here, I can remove these outliers from the data. And now we're looking at clusters of bicycle accidents in Melbourne. With click, you can continue to ask the next question. In this case, I saw, based on the timeline in the scatter plot, that one cluster seems to have had several accidents in recent years. By selecting the cluster, I find that it is on the intersection of Lonsdale and Elizabeth Street. This is an intelligent, actionable insight that has real-world consequences, made possible by the power of Click's interactive associative experience and advanced analytics algorithms. Now let's move to our final example, which is on supervised machine learning. In this example, we will build a predictive model using historical data and then use it to make predictions. We're going to use workforce data, where we want to predict the employees at risk of leaving the organization. What you're looking at are the ingredients needed to build a predictive model. The main ingredient, which will determine how well your model works, is the training and testing dataset. The target here is attrition column, which identifies employees that left the company in the past. Alongside the target, we have dimensions and measures that could possibly help predict a target. In data science, these columns are called features. Looking at these features, such as how often an employee was required to travel, the daily rate, distance from home, these are fields that you can find in general Click HR apps. Click is great at bringing data so different data sources together and deriving dimensions and measures which in this case, help us build a predictive model. Now to automate the machine learning, the approach I've taken requires metadata around our features. So we're identifying targets and features for our algorithm, providing data types, and finally specifying the strategy that we want to use to prepare the data for machine learning. This part is something Python is good at, and I've automated each of these strategies. Finally, we provide information on how to scale the data and the estimator we want to use to train the model. In this solution, I'm using Scikit-Learn, one of the leading libraries in machine learning, which provides several well-researched and efficient algorithms. You can specify any of the Scikit-Learn classes here as an estimator, which is quite useful, as in machine learning, we usually go to trial and error to build a good model. In this case, we're going to train and test five different models and then choose the best one. Let's hit load and see what happens. Uh, you will see that five files appear in this directory and slowly increase in size. We've just gone through several function calls from Click to Python, which have set up the models, trained them, and then tested them. Under the covers, this is a reusable load process and click. For this video, we'll just focus on the outcome. This sheet shows us the results from testing our five models. During the load, we automatically broke our dataset down into training and testing components. The test component is only used after we have built the model uh, to evaluate how the model performs on unseen data. From this, we get a score which in the case of classification is the accuracy of the model. Uh, we can see that the logistic regression model performed best. We can look at several other metrics, but an intuitive way to evaluate the model is to look at a confusion matrix. This matrix shows our predicted labels versus the true labels. And we can see that logistic regression does do a pretty decent job correctly identifying 30 employees that actually left the organization. We can also see how many employees were wrongly identified or missed. This is a pretty good result, as trying to get everything right usually uh, results in overfitting the model to what is just a sample of real world data. Usually to get such a good result, we go through several iterations of improving input features and optimizing the estimators. Finally, let's see how we can use this predictive model. 
This is a typical click app focused on the business problem of attrition. It shows the attrition rate uh, and historical data by department, uh, as well as new data where we want to identify employees at risk of leaving. We can explore the data, for example, look at a specific age range and salary hike and see how the attrition rate changes. However, across the many dimensions and measures in the data, it is hard to identify where attrition is most likely to happen. This is where our predictive model helps, as it can look across many different features to arrive at a prediction. So on this sheet, right now, we have historical data as well as the unknowns, the current employees where we want to identify our risk. When I click predict, we will send this data to a model, which then returns to us the predictions. This is again done by a function called to clip Python. In this case, we have chosen the logistic regression model, which performed the best against our test data. And we can see for historical data, the results are lining up well as expected. And now we can start focusing in on our business questions. Perhaps I am interested in the research and development department and in only the unknowns, the new data. The predictions that came back from Python are also part of a data model now and can be used to ask questions. So I can focus on just those employees identified to be at risk of leaving. We are now down to just those 11 employees. And from here, we can carry on our analysis and click. For example, looking at the monthly salary for these employees, which raises the next question. Would, this, would the prediction change if we made certain adjustments for these employees? This takes us to a bit of what-if analysis. Now in Click, the features we are sending to our model are simply dimensions and measures. And so we can tweak these values using expressions and see how the predictions change. So right now, we are asking if we increase the monthly salary for these 11 employees, how would that affect their risk of leaving? We can see that at the moment, the original predictions and the new predictions are exactly the same. Now let's adjust the increment, let's say to 25%. We can see that now several predictions have changed to no. So by combining the power of click with machine learning, we, are we can directly foresee our business problem and take informed corrective actions. We went through three examples of how advanced analytics can provide you deep insights in your data. By doing this in Click, you can leverage our powerful analytics engine to use these techniques to ask questions in real time. And using our platform, you can deliver these capabilities across the business into the hands of decision makers who are tackling the most complex questions. The Python server-side extension that I have developed is available on Click branch, and you can get to it by going to developer.click.com and searching for data science. Alternatively, you can just directly go to the project on GitHub. The project provides the code, uh, documentation on installation and usage, as well as sample Click apps. The usage documentation is written for a Click app author and goes into how you can try out these capabilities on your own data sets. Thank you, and I hope this inspires you to get even more value out of your investment in Click.